All right, let's issues. fucking do it. Dude, I am very worried about what happens when I get skinny. Like, my boobs do not feel like they used to. Like, they're gonna, I'm pretty sure they're gonna look like broken balls. <laughs> no, seriously, like, feel that. Like, just rub your hand, like. Oh, you can feel the ripple. Uh-oh. And this is a lot of fat over them. Hey guys, and welcome back to our show. My name is Allison Bates. I'm Gina Scafolio. And we are IFBB Bikini Pros. And today we are going to be talking about breast augmentation, if it's um, something that you need to have done, and how it can help in competing. This is episode number seven, so let's dive in. All right. <laughs> All right, so the first question slash thing we want to cover is, do you need them? The short answer is no. The long answer is maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, it totally depends on like your body type, mm-hmm. honestly. And, and some people I feel like need them to kind of complete their physique. And some people, they just have the frame and just the body type to where they really don't need them. And there's like, I mean, there's a handful of pros that don't have them and they're very successful. Like two people mm-hmm. on my team already, Laura Lee Chapados and Jennifer Dory. So, I mean, there's two right there, top five Olympians that don't have a breast augmentation. So that's one example of people who don't need them. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it proves that, like, the judges actually don't require you to have a breast augmentation. And Total you, misconception. Yeah, you hear people talk about it all the time. You have to have yeah. it done to be successful in the, in the sport or to go pro, and that's definitely not the case. There are so many women that go pro without breast augmentations. Um, The girl who I went pro with didn't have her breasts done. Like, you know, it's just, there's so many people that don't have it. So don't ever get this done just because like you think competing. Just for the stage, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We're gonna talk about like, you know, pros and cons of getting them. And like, I mean, we recommend getting them if that's something that you really, really want. It's gonna help your confidence, um, you know, just in general life and you've wanted them for a long time. But Mm -hmm. if you just want them to compete, don't get them, Mm -hmm. honestly. like. If you feel like you might regret it later on in life or even when you're done competing, just don't do it because you really don't need them. I agree. So how can they help though? So we were talking about different body shapes mm-hmm. and how they can... Like um, frames too. Framework. So what, what, how would you say like the perfect... So my, my thing is usually like how broad your chest and shoulders are. Mm-hmm. So there are some people, like of course your frame's going to get bigger like with the more muscle you put on Mm -hmm. but some people like me just naturally have wide set shoulders and a a large frame like even before I started lifting and so like when I did start lifting it got even bigger and bigger and like it was basically like this big blank space across my chest yeah and it just looked like something was missing from my physique and when I got them done it kind of like completed that look but there are girls like a lot of girls that have a smaller frame so it's like you know, they'll put on muscle and it's still, it kind of, they, they put on the muscle, but they still have the small front chest area. Mm-hmm. So it's not as apparent that it's just such a big open Blank space. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And then I think also people who might have like more of a concave chest, mm-hmm. um, like no that, development. Yeah. That would be very, um, beneficial. Um, cause one thing like you have to realize is when you start putting on muscle, like you're going to grow, like you're front delt and your upper chest a lot as a bikini athlete Mm -hmm. and you're you you, and you shouldn't have like huge separation right here because you're not training like lower chest necessarily like a lot of it's focused on upper upper so you are going to get a little bit more development there and it's going to look a little bit more full so if you have like a small amount to work with and your chest isn't that broad i i don't feel like it would be that big of an issue Mm -hmm. um if you already have a natural x because your lats are nice and you have a smaller like you know chest frame then yeah you yeah, really I mean, don't need them yeah it's not going to be marked against you whenever the judges are looking at your frame because they're looking at that x mm-hmm. and like if your lower body looks great and your upper body looks great but then like when you go into your position and you look a little off because you have nothing going on on top that's when you can run into issues yeah i feel like a uh, one really good example like i just thought about you know we were talking about different pros mm-hmm. you know someone that has a really small frame that didn't get their boobs done that like really fits this criteria is tana tanya eubanks mm-hmm. um she doesn't really compete that much anymore but she was definitely like one of those top level pros yeah. i think she's won like 10 shows or something crazy yeah um but she's someone that has those really small sh- like the really small frame mm-hmm. 
Um, she built up her ex like with muscular development, but like it really just fits her physique. And another one is Jasmine Gonzalez. Oh yeah. And she's someone that like Definitely. really preaches like you don't need them, like you could do without them. And her thing is like find a good suit maker that can like if you do have a little bit of tissue, like make the most out of that tissue. Yeah, there's different cuts like mm -hmm. now people have like the long um like shorter yeah. like the long or shorter thicker you know so you can really yeah. fit it to your frame and mm -hmm. that's going to be the most important thing that you do when you're picking out a suit too besides like the bottom cut it's like picking out the right frame for your upper body because you will see some people go out on stage mm -hmm. and you're just like uh, should have covered that up a little bit yeah definitely. if you have like a really big chest like really big broad chest and you're not going to get an augmentation, you need bigger triangles. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have no tissue. If you do have some tissue, um, then you might want to go a little bit smaller, but you might want longer so it's not these tiny little triangles on a big area. Yeah. You want it to take up enough, <laughs> like, volume or, like, what's the word? Area. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So has to look nice. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to the next thing, like, um, do you get deducted for them being too large? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can like directly quote this but I'm pretty sure I've heard it from Sandy or Becky she's like fit pro Becky is like one of the um, national yeah. IFBB judges and she posts a lot on her page like so if you guys don't follow her that's a great source like mm -hmm. and she's posted a lot about augmentations before so I don't want to directly quote either of them but I'm pretty sure I've seen both of them say you know if you do get a breast augmentation and they're just like I don't know, triple D's or whatever size, and it doesn't fit your frame or your body, and it's overpowering, you, you'll get deducted because it it's not necessarily that they're judging your boobs, but like Ali was saying earlier, they're looking for that X frame, mm -hmm. and they're looking for balance from upper body to lower body. And, if the and you're going to be top heavy if you have triple D's. Yeah, like. if the top's like this, <laughs> and then the bottom's like this, it's going to throw you off. Yep. So. Yeah, so you can't get deducted for not having them necessarily, mm -hmm. but they can judge your chest a little bit differently, I'm assuming. Like, maybe that's where it can come into play. Mm -hmm. But then if they're too big, they can definitely get deducted. Yeah. So those are some things to think about. Well, now that we've talked about some of that, like, I want to move more into the um, idea of how do you even get your breasts done and what type do you get and what size and... You know, how long is recovery, like, how did that process go for, you know, for us and for everyone who's had them done? So there's really, like, two main types, the silicone and saline, mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely a pros and cons of both, mm -hmm. and we each got different ones. I got silicone, she got, I, mean, I, got, I silicone got silicone, too, yeah. but mine's the gummy bear, which until, I don't even think, well, maybe, like, when you got yours done, it may have just came out, mm -hmm. but it was, like, a brand new yeah. thing back in 20. 18, so I think 2017 is when they dropped them. Yeah, somewhere around then, or like maybe it was like a couple years before, but they didn't really use them until mm -hmm. like you got them done. Mm -hmm. A lot of doctors are just kind of set in their ways with what they know, and I think yeah. they're, the boom of them started coming out in 17 and 18 because they started realizing that there were less repercussions when it came to like breakage, mm -hmm. and they don't leak, the, like, they actually... They just kind of expand, which is interesting. I know, like, they said that the same thing for mine, too. Like, it doesn't actually disperse in your body. It kind of just, like, leaks out in its space. But I think you, there's still, like, more... It's, like, for some reason, those are a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. That's what they were telling me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like, the actual facts either. Yeah, you guys might have to ask your doctor about that. But mm -hmm. that is one of the main differences between, like, the regular silicone and the gummy bear. There's also mm -hmm. the way they feel is a little bit... Um, and the shape. Yeah, the shape and the feel is a little bit different. So those are some things that you can talk to your doctor about. Um, your doctor shouldn't be charging another grand or two for it. That means that your doctor is just like taking your money. Yeah. So when you're looking for a doctor, um, I would say to price check and then also go to a bunch of different doctors. Yeah. Um, make oh, sure yeah. you get a lot of opinions. Because, oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, tell your story about that because that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I was living in Lubbock, Texas at the time, which is like, literally in the middle of nowhere and you know it's just like a small town just like country people and there really wasn't that many good plastic surgeons in Lubbock like why would I don't know why yeah. would they want to live there honestly yeah um, no offense if you're a plastic surgeon and you're in Lubbock but <laughs> <laughs> right. but there are the chances um but yeah so the first doctor I went to I, I was working with this girl and she was like yeah this is my doctor like I love my boobs blah 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 go to her so that's the first consultation I went to 
And what they do is, like, they put you in a room. They're like, okay, take off your um, shirt and, like, put this gown over. Um, and I'll come back in in, like, a few minutes. Here's a book so you can look at transformations, like, while you're waiting. So they left the room. I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, flipping through the book. And I was like, um... <laughs> Um, is this normal? These are the ones that I want. Yeah, and, like, the one that really scared me, well, this doctor didn't do any low profile. So, like, if you guys don't know what profile is, there's low profile that are, like, right here, and then there's, like, moderate, which, like, stick out a little bit more, and then there's high that stick out a little bit more, and then there's ultra. Um, and so this surgeon put ultra high profile, but it was, like, 275 cc, which is, like, a really small size. It literally looked like two tennis balls slapped on, like, over here. Yeah. And, like, oh, yeah. there was still this big, like, broad area, and it just looked so bad. And I was like, why would she even put that in the book? Yeah. And then there was, there was a bunch of them like that. And then there was a lot that were, like, super uneven. And what this doctor told me was that whatever your bo- boobs look like now, they're going to look the same, just bigger. And in my mind, I'm like, if there's a big enough imbalance, they can put two different sizes. Yeah. Yep. And that's what the other doctors told me, and they even considered it with me. Mm-hmm. And this doctor was like, nope, they're just going to be whatever. I'm just going to put the same implant. Oh. Yeah, see, my doctor did different sizes, too. I actually, mine were barely off. like, mm-hmm. And they still did different and sizes. And he did 15 cc's different wow. in my right. I kind of wish, like, yeah, mine are, uh, well, actually, mine are the same size, but mine, like, the bone is different. Oh. Like, where they, where they actually, like start so Mm -hmm. I think that was the issue with mine but that was the first consultation I went to I went to one more and then the third one I actually like I flew to Houston because I was like all right I'm not gonna find a good plastic surgeon in this in this fucking city (laughs) so I went to Houston I found the best doctor I could which is like Dr. Caravino and thank god like I went to him because that doctor too is like he only will do natural looks if you want, like, w- like ginormous boobs, mm-hmm. he'll say no. Yeah, that's and if, kinda how my doctor was. Yeah, and that's what you want. Like, yeah. that, you don't want a surgeon that will just give you what you want. You want a surgeon that cares about their work mm-hmm. and the outcome. And he all, they give you all the warnings first. So I'm not joking, like, the second I walked into the guy I ended up going with, he immediately was like, okay, so you want this done? I'm like, yep. He's like, well, now you have to sit through the next 45 minutes of me telling you all the things that can go wrong. Which is, a big thing with silicone, oh, by the way. A lot of things go wrong. Yeah, so we can talk about those now. Yeah. Um. So first of all, saline is definitely way safe, safer option. It's literally just salt water, mm-hmm. and if they burst, it's just salt water in your body. Nothing's gonna happen. There's really like, I mean, I'm sure there's some side effects, but really, it's just like a way safer option. And if they burst, you obviously have to go in get them mm-hmm. redone. So that's a huge surgery, and mm-hmm. I think they might. Maybe it was an old thing, but they used to burst a little bit easier then. Yeah. Now it's, it's it's a lot less. Probably a little bit safer uh-huh. than it used to be. But, but those, uh, they also don't feel and look as real. No. They're a little bit more firm because it's water. Like, they can only do so much mm-hmm. with, like, with the material they're working with. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so if you're looking for a more natural look, silicone or saline is not the, the way option. to go. It's kind of like when people go, I want the Barbie doll look you get saline. Or if you have tissue, like if you have enough breast tissue and you're just going a little bit bigger and maybe you're not getting them for competition or like you only plan on competing once, whatever. If you're, if you have like breast tissue and you're not going to get shredded, then it doesn't matter. You can Mm -hmm. get saline and you won't be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. But the issue comes with us competitors when you lean out and you lose all the breast tissue and then all that's left is the implant. If it's saline, it's possible that it's not going to look as good. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But with silicone, then you run into like yeah a lot of issues so which issues. unfortunately I might be experiencing some um, and you can tell by looking at like my before and after pictures from like one year post to now two years post and there's definitely a difference in the way they look yeah. and so one of the biggest uh, most common ones is capsular contraction mm-hmm. and pretty much all that means is when they place that um, breast implant into your tissue it forms a scar tissue around it uh, mm-hmm. to protect because that's what your body does. It makes sure that it's not um, getting attacked from outside sources. So it protects itself and instead of just like stopping because it knows it's protected, it's, it attacks it. Like so your immune system is just like, rah, 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 I'm going to keep attacking. So it gets tighter and tighter mm-hmm. and tighter until you're like pretty much stuck with balls, like hard balls, which mm-hmm. you have to end up getting taken out. Yeah. And like 
other than the way they look and if it hurts, there's really nothing you yeah, can do. Yeah, and yeah, and there's nothing you could do. There's it's not like you know it's going to hurt you. Like you're not gonna get sick from it. This doesn't look good. Yeah. So now you you might have like one hard boob, one soft boob. You might have higher boobs, lower boobs. Like you don't know what's gonna happen yeah. with the boob because. It's just doing what it wants. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it's really common. And I, there's definitely some things that you can do to prevent it. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it's just like person to person, like mm -hmm. how your body responds. You don't know responds. how your body's going to respond. Yeah. So there's capsular contraction. Then rippling. Rippling. Mm -hmm. So rippling is like, so basically like imagine like a wave, like how ripples, same thing that happens to an implant because mm -hmm. it's, it's like there's liquid inside. Mm -hmm. So like, I know, I know for both of us, the biggest way you can tell is like when we're in prep, and you lean and over, over. <laughs> and you'll see like from the side all the ripples. Yeah, it like it's just like warps in mm -hmm. where it wants because you have no body fat around it. Like if I was doing over and out, can't really tell at all. But the second I get, mm, I don't know, like maybe eighteen percent or less, like it gets apparent. And whenever I'm stage lean, it's honestly like I cover my breasts up because unless they're like completely mm -hmm. pushed to my my chest, like in a stage. Mm -hmm you can see the ripples yeah. like just sitting it's not well I was gonna say that one thing one like difference between us two is like she got over the muscle mm -hmm. I got under the muscle mm -hmm. and when you go under the muscle it's less apparent like rippling is less apparent like it's just like less visible like the implants less visible in general mm -hmm. um, but it's a little bit more of a painful recovery I think there there might be some more risks like obviously we're not doctors so you know, don't quote us, but... Yeah, going underneath the muscle presents risks in different ways just because you are cutting the pec muscle mm -hmm. completely open to put a bag underneath it. When you go over the muscle, like, you know, you're just kind of cutting underneath the skin and shoving it up in there, making sure... But the, the problem with that one is is you can ruin your mammary glands easily or... Like, easily or more easy. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus! I um, easier. <laughs> I easier. And, when, and so when... You, you can disrupt like kind of the natural production of what happens like in your nipple and oh there's more there's more risk for like being numb too um, which oh, that's yeah, a side yeah. effect for like nipple numbness every or like sensitivity yeah you might lose it or it might yeah. be so intense that like you can't touch it oh my gosh yeah I like I know like my my recovery was like god awful we're gonna talk about that too <laughs> yeah. I didn't think that they cut the muscle though I thought that they just stretched it Mm -mm, they have to cut a pocket. Really? Uh -huh. oh well, God. it depends where they go in through. So oh, yeah. That's another there's thing. also, like, incision site. Mm -hmm. I got underneath. I did there's too. armpit, and there's through the nipple. I honestly, like... And belly button. Ugh. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a thing? I swear to God. Oh, my God. I've never heard that. That's crazy. Yeah. So, some people think, you know, it's really... I feel like <laughs> it, it comes down to personal preference of where you want your scar to be. Mm -hmm. For me, it makes sense under the boob. You're never mm -hmm. going to see it. Mm -hmm. Like, the only way you'll see it is if you literally pick up your boob yeah. or like someone's like directly underneath you, which I mean, I guess if you're having sex, it's possible. Yeah. But, but like, I don't have whatever. scars. Honestly, my scars are very small. They're like this big and like so light uh -huh. it, it you, they're just not noticeable. Yeah. Which um, is awesome. Mm -hmm. I think going underneath made the most sense for yeah. me and just and in me. general. I, I don't really know why you'd go through the nipple because those things I just talked about like go up by a bajillion percent well also like it looks weird <laughs> yeah because it you're yeah you're, you're putting a scar, scar on your nipple, nipple. and it then like make sense. armpit like i can see why people do that it's close and you but can then, put it in without the um, big scar but imagine this when you're like in your front pose and you don't have hair covered up you're it's still gonna see it you're yeah. gonna, it's gonna be way more visible right here yeah then and a lot of doctors won't do the nipple or the belly because they think that those are higher risk, which they are. So really mostly it's just yeah. underneath or armpit. And let's say you are talking to a doctor and you want to go under and they won't do that. Like for some reason, that's not their technique. Like you're going to have to look for another doctor. So yeah. there's, that's why you really have to go in depth with these doctor consultations. Yeah. And like doctors will tell you different things. Yeah. And, like, they'll tell you, like, you know, this way is better. And another doctor would tell you this way is better. Mm -hmm. Like, you yeah. have to go to multiple. You went, did you go to multiple? Yeah, I went to multiple. I, well, mainly what I did is I called a bunch. Mm -hmm. And I got to know, like, what were their prices? What kind of implants did they have? Mm -hmm. And what did their, like, before and after transformations look like? Yeah, so transformations before I even huge. went in anywhere, like, I only actually went into two. But, like, yeah. the other ones, like, I was just like, no. 
no, no. Like price was a thing for me. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to go cheap, but I also wasn't trying to get screwed. $10,000. Yeah. yeah so like people that pay like 10. anything over eight, in my opinion, I yeah. think is you're getting kind of screwed unless you're paying mm-hmm. for like the number one surgeon in the world, which, you know, there are really great ones out there, but at the same time, like, you know, I, I, you like, can ask your surgeon how many breast implants they've done. Oh yeah. Like they, they have to tell you all these things. So mm-hmm. like, you know, are you going to someone who's been doing this for 40 years? Okay, cool. He's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> like mine was, my guy was old. He had a daughter my age and he looked at me and he goes, I would not give you anything other than what you're getting and be comfortable going over the muscle. He's like, you'd have to go under and go larger. He's like, but with the sport that you're in, the muscle development you have and the lifestyle you live, I highly suggest going against it. Mm -hmm. So like the size I got was the largest he was actually comfortable with giving me. Yeah, they did the same for me because like my my muscles were so tight and I really didn't have that much tissue and they were like, you know, it's already going to be a painful recovery, which, oh my God, it was awful. (laughs) But had I gone any bigger, it would have been even worse. And like also you could get stretch marks and um, because your skin is literally being stretched. Like when you touch someone's boobs or your own boobs after and after you get an augmentation like oh. this skin is weird it's like there's no no place on your body that you can compare it to with how tight your it's skin gets so tight and hard and it'll peel like especially if you're going from nothing to something like I didn't peel oh my gosh mine didn't because I had enough breast tissue but like Kelly's Kelly did said, yeah. and I talked to some other girls and they said that it was the same thing but it was for a woman who legit just had the type of skin that like didn't have a lot in there to start with and then you put in such a big implant we can talk about size too like speaking Mm -hmm. of size so totally depends (laughs) on your frame Uh and it's it's hard to compare and you can't say abcd that means nothing like you just imagine abcd throw that out the window when it comes to implants because like it is not relevant whatsoever so it goes by cc's Mm -hmm. and it goes i don't know anywhere from like 200 to, I don't know, thousands. I don't know. Yeah, how, it goes how. up high. Now, if you're getting, like, I would say if you're looking at a scale and you're going on somebody who has, like, a 5'4", 130 pounds, only A's to start with, if you put in, like, 400 or, like, I would say 400, you're probably looking at a D. If you put in 300, Wait. you're probably looking at a C. If you put in 200, you're probably looking at a B. And that's like on a, a person my size. That's like, well, probably... I got I got two seventy five cc's, and mine are still like a B cup. Yeah. Like I mean, you do have a broader, but yeah, that's true. Mhm. It, it's and see that's why it's so like like weird because you can't really estimate. Like I'm right now in my off season a double D. I got three hundred and sixty. CCs, but I was also starting with a very small C cup. I used to have yeah. breasts this large, so whenever I started competing, they they shrunk. Like when I'd compete, they'd be almost A's. Like I was like working with a very small B, large A cup. Mm-hmm. And um, when I get my breast tissue back, I'm small C. So whenever I do compete, my boobs go from a double D down to a 32 C. So I go to a 34 double D, which is like two sizes actually bigger. Yeah. And then I drop back down. So Mm -hmm. when you're picking your sizes, you have to think, are you going to be gaining more weight? Like what is your actual life going to look like when you're not Not competing? competing. Like what if you got boobs for your competition size and then now you're two sizes bigger when you're not competing? And they're too big off stage. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something you have to take into (laughs) consideration. Oh yeah. And like, if you get too big, like you're going to have back problems and like Mm -hmm. it'll get in the way of your training. If you like to do sprints on the treadmill, um, you got to wear three sports bras. Yeah. Like I can already tell, like whenever I'm my off season right now, just doing simple things like, you know, double front raises. They're in the way. Yeah. Like, oh, you're trying to do like, like get out of my way. <laughs> like the, where you do like the crossover yeah, front raises. Yeah, I can't do those. Yeah. And, and like then like, um, or any type of like lying on a bench, dude. Oh, I know. Ouch. Or seated, like things you have to like get your boobs up on top of it. And, like, <laughs> you know, like put your chest, like, like your ass. Like, yeah. They just can't. get in the way. <laughs> yeah. They totally get in the way. So if mine were two sizes bigger, like I thought I wanted, mm. And I kind of went, I mean, I have the opposite issue. This is the biggest he would go for, like, like I said, the tissue in my frame um, because he wanted it to look natural. But since then, I've, I've put on a lot of muscle and, like, 
I like my lats are way bigger than yeah. when I got them done. So that's something else you have to consider is like, how much more are you going to grow muscular wise? Because, um, you know, Lauren, is it Dan and Miller? Yeah, Lauren, Dan and Miller. Yeah, Lauren. So she's someone like she, she posted on her Instagram. So you guys can refer to that. Um, but whenever she got her implants done, she had a really small frame. She really didn't have lap development, no shoulders, mm -hmm. and they fit her body. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward two years, she became an IFBB pro. She put on all this muscle, oh, yeah. and they looked way too small for her body now. So she, she actually, had that like, like problem where they almost looked like balls on the sides because mm -hmm. they didn't fit her frame anymore. Yeah, so she like had to get a revision. She got bigger, like she got bigger boobs now. Yeah, I think she got like closer to my size. That's what I want. I want to get my as soon as I pay mine off which I finance mine, by the way, I'm going to get bigger ones because like my tissue is stretched out now. Mm -hmm. So like you can go, once you get the first ones, if you want to get them revised, like you can always do that mm -hmm. to go through the process again. But yeah. And talking about going through the process again. Oh yeah. So we can talk about recovery, dude. It was rough. And to all y'all out there that say it wasn't, you have less. Yeah, you, you have, like, really insane pain tolerance. Or <laughs> it also depends on, like, your muscular development. That's true. Depends on the doctor. Depends on the size. Like, there's so many variables that affect your, your like, recovery. Your recovery. But, but don't. were not good. <laughs> as a competitor, like, and if you're going under the muscle especially, don't pay attention to the internet. The internet tells you three days. That's so why. I literally couldn't hold my phone for three days. Yeah. Um, that's not an exaggeration. You don't realize, like, you use your pecs for literally everything. Picking mm -hmm. up something, you use your pec. Like, going like this, brushing your teeth. It was hard to brush my teeth. I just used yeah. mouthwash for, like, a week, which oh, is, yeah. I'm sorry, that's gross, but, like, No, you, you it hurts really couldn't do anything. I think, so, to put this into, like, an easy way to understand, I got mine done with my best friend at the same time. We were in bed together the whole entire week. A, a whole entire week. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not an exaggeration. Yes. And our boyfriends had to take shifts on who's watching us because <laughs> we couldn't. First of all, the first day I kept passing out. Passed out on the toilet. I passed out on the ground. Like, I couldn't keep food down. I was getting mm -hmm. upset stomach. The pain pills were causing me constipation. Like, mm -hmm. all the things that could have happened, like, happened to me. And... I couldn't even get out of bed. So, like, let's yeah, say I after had to day two, yeah, they have to lift up your chest like a baby, like an old like person pick that you can't up from move, your back, yeah. and then pick you up, move you, and then help you walk to the bathroom. Because if you try to tighten your abs to pick yourself up, oh. it contracts your chest. Like, you oh, yeah. can't flex your abs without... And you can't press down with your hands either. Oh, you, you can't, can't, like, do push anything. down on nothing. Yeah. So, I would get out of bed by going like this. You need a caretaker. <laughs> and then I like somehow get my way up. Honestly, like, though, that's and that's how I moved for like five days because it was so hard. Just <laughs> I didn't want to drink water because I didn't want to go to the bathroom. Yeah, like I had my sister take care of me, but yeah, you guys, you need a caretaker. Mm -hmm. And if your parent kind of sucks and you want them to be your care, like you know, you need to find a friend. You need a, have yeah, you a need boyfriend more. for the week. You need to go on Tinder, Bumble, find boyfriend for the week. Do it. <laughs> you can't do it alone. Like no, I get asked that frequently like how long was your recovery and long. do you need help you can't go to work you can't mm -hmm. do anything for that first week and it, it took us about what three weeks to get back to work mm -hmm. and back to like walking on the treadmill mm -hmm. um so about you know first week expect to be in bed yeah second week maybe walking you around the do house normal doing things, things on your again, own kind of kind of work yeah like people say like you can after three days you can go back to work if you have a desk job bullshit no. it hurt to type for the first week yeah so after a week you know, I mean, at least take off a week, even if you have a desk job. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. If not more. Um, but we were bartenders, so, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't really get back to actually working for, like, two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then even then we had to have help when it oh, came yeah. to, like, you can't pick up a bar stool. No. Like. You can't, like, clean the bottles, put anything up too high. Oh, yeah. Like, all my bottles I had to, like, keep in my, my, my quick well. And then mm -hmm. if anyone asked me for things I couldn't shake, like, I... Oh yeah, you can't doing the two two handed pours like, yeah. like what the fuck? You're definitely special. <laughs> you you need some special care, like you yeah. need work. Oh yeah. So um now when it came to actually being able to move again, we started walking on the treadmill week three to four. Like mm -hmm. walking was actually walking for me was more painful. I had to go on a bike because any movement, oh, like yeah. any bounce, like just driving in a car, like Oh, the drive dude, home after. Yeah, drive home was miserable. Like every yeah. bounce was like I was crying. I cried the whole way home from the 
from the hospital. I did too. Um, <laughs> but like I started lifting like lower body, like getting on machines after about a month. Yeah, same. Um, and like, you know, slowly increasing, like listening to your body. If something mm-hmm. hurt, I do, would just stop immediately. Like you don't want to push through the pain with this. Because no, that's like gonna increase the risk for capsular contraction. Yeah. Um, and like there's hematomas, like there's all kinds of issues that you can run into. Yeah, you um, you could break the stitches. Like yeah, going back you to like to, let's do that. Like upper body six weeks, and that was like very very light. Yeah, no chest, and even back would hurt a little bit because mm-hmm. you know it's the posing. So it would be more like the simplest little maybe presses and little bicep curls hurt. and yeah. triceps, like smallest things pressing hurt yeah. pressing hurt for like three months yeah um and then you know it to did. go back to li- literally 100 percent like where i could do a pull-up it took me a year yeah um i couldn't do a pull-up for a year because you have to like really really use your whole body to pull yourself up and you have to think that muscle is getting used to stretching it's getting used to moving in a different way than it was mm-hmm. before and um i would say you're totally right on the timeline. That's exactly how mine went. It was like three weeks and six weeks, eight weeks. I was doing a little bit more working out, but yeah. by three months, I was feeling good. Pretty good, yeah. But I still couldn't do a lot of things like um, any type of sprints. Like, oh, oh, hell no. I felt like it was the weirdest feeling. It was like they almost got like numb and tingly and then like almost hurt, like hurt, but in a different way of hurt, like numb. Mine would ache. Yeah. That's another thing. Literally everyone's different. Everyone's recovery is different. And I mean, you're going to read that on the internet, but Mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. Yeah. But if you're competing, like just so you know, you can compete like that same year. Like, so I got my breast done the beginning of January in 2018 and I went pro nine months later, nine months later. So I actually took that month off Mm -hmm. and then started prep in February and prep from February until July with a couple shows in between and then I ended up doing a pro show like a couple months later so it's possible but it's rushed I I did the same thing it was hard I got mine in December so a month before and then my next show was summer shredding which Mm -hmm. was end of June and I won the overall did really well and I was able to like I was able to prep I didn't put on like too much weight that's another thing is like when you're recovering like you're gonna put on body fat and you're gonna lose muscle. Yeah, you can't um, do anything. <laughs> so you wanna you wanna keep in mind like you want to you wanna time it right to where you're not competing too soon to where you like have time to kind of get muscle back mm-hmm. because by the end of of my recovery, my shoulders and lats were like I felt like I had stepped six months backwards. But yeah, I also I was so skinny by the end of all my stuff. I stopped eating protein as much though. Like I kind of slacked on my protein, so I probably lost more muscle than I would have had I kept up with that but yeah you're not using your muscles like so your body is like why do we need them yeah yeah it was it was an interesting uh recovery but like long story short we're both very happy that we got them done we both feel like it does help our overall look I know that even with some of the issues I'm dealing with I'm still happy that I have them Mm -hmm. and you know if for me it gains a little bit of confidence um and it also I just like the way of the way it looks and you know whether or not your reasoning is for you or for another person like I just want you guys to understand the risks and the recovery and the price and like you just have to really be like mindful about all these things just like yeah plan it out well yeah time it right plan it out well go to a lot of consultations like weigh the pros and cons and decide if you're getting a boob job for you or for the stage and if it's for the stage seriously put some like thought into reconsidering because it's a really expensive and painful process for you to get it just for the stage yeah you guys have to really put in it into perspective of how kind of fucking retarded it is (laughs) to get a breast implant like you are cutting open a perfectly healthy body to put in a foreign object for an aesthetic mm -hmm. look Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about silicone toxicity, too. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> you guys, that's like, I'm not going to, you know, go off on a tangent, but look up silicone toxicity. It's a common thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a lot more common than we think it was. Like, now social media is exposing it, but that's like, you're really, like, putting yourself, your health at risk. Yep. So, make sure it's for the right reasons, and, you know, for us, I feel like it was definitely um, worth it, and mm-hmm. I've had no issues other than I wish they were a little bit bigger, but that's, you know... I can always go back and have them redone. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm really, really happy that I did it. Yeah. And I feel like my confidence, especially on stage, like went from like zero to 10, zero to 100, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just like really, I felt really excited to take photos the first time that I could show them, honestly. Oh, for it, sure. It was, it was a cool experience. It, it was really fun to have them again. Cause like, as I was saying, like I went from having them to nothing and I was like, like almost like I lost the part of my identity. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't realize like how much you value parts yeah. of your body until like they're it's gone. gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I was happy to have them back, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with all that being said, I mean, just be smart about it and reach out to people, reach out to as many doctors and research, do your research. Yeah. Um, and just a disclaimer, we're not doctors. Like, we did not research anything before we did this yeah. this little show. Like, this is just from our experience, from what our doctors told our us. Our opinion. We did not fact check shit. So, you know, you guys... Always negative comments. Leave them at the door. (laughs) Um, And anything medical we said, like, you guys, just do your own research. Figure it out for yourself. Talk to your doctor. And, you know, at the end of the day, if if you feel like it's going to really help you, your mind and your confidence and everything else, then Mm -hmm. go for it. But um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next episode. Yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. See ya.